Folks, today we are going to show you using a couple of tractors, a big one and a small one. And um, I'm actually recording this way after. We've got the video, actually, Chris just spliced it together and put it on here. And uh, two reasons. One, kind of ran out of time that day. And number two, I was pretty frustrated with how things went and I just didn't really feel like talking. So um, this is going to be kind of reflective looking back on this project. And the end result has turned out well. Um, but doing the project was, it was just one of those days, man. It was just one of those days. So anyway, we're going to go through it. I'll just kind of give you some, some, uh, you know, play by play here as we're going along and, and tell you what my thoughts are. And, you know, it, it can be a challenge to sh talk about what's happening like right after it, right? Without, because I'm trying to remember everything afterwards of what happened. And so uh, hopefully this maybe gives some different insights as to why I did things that I did or what I was doing or what I was trying to do and, uh, and go from there. So let's get into it and we'll just kind of go through this. So I've got a big old parking pad uh, behind my barn. We've shown you some of that process, getting it prepped. And we used a big uh, dozer blade on the JCB to peel the topsoil out and then uh, scooped it all up and got that out of there and changed the grade a bit so that water would drain off. It's a slight slope. Don't want me to be a huge slope, but um, I intend for this to be kind of behind the barn, out of sight, out of mind, and be used for just parking storage of my trailers and if there's extra room, maybe tractors or other equipment uh, as well. But I, the, the goal is to have a whole turnaround around this whole building so we can just pull right around the building and park trailers and that kind of thing um, and, and not have to do any kind of weird backing up and all that kind of stuff to park trailers. But we're using the same guy. You guys have seen Tom here with Balcom Excavating and Tom does a really great job uh, with material spreading it out. But <laughs> Tom was frustrated on this day as well. It, the material was clumpy. It was not spreading like it normally would. Uh, there were certain sections at, at the, you know, his location when it was getting scooped up that were wetter and certain sections that were drier. And so it was just spreading inconsistently like what he's normally used to, which as a dump truck operator, I imagine that has to be very frustrating. So what we wound up with were big piles, right? Because it, it just didn't release in the manner that it normally would. And so it required me to do more work afterwards. Now we laid down road fabric, all right? So I wanna talk about that a little bit. And the first big projects that we had done, putting in gravel lanes and things like that, we had not used road fabric at all. And then a lot of commenters were like, hey, you should really be using geotextile, you know, and uh, put that stuff down there. It does, it really serves a couple of purposes and that depends who you talk to. There's, it's a very hot topic of, no, it doesn't prevent any weeds versus yes, it prevents weeds versus it really is only designed to prevent stone from sinking down. And so one of the reasons that on the first big road project we did at my other property is we peeled off all the topsoil because that's organic material and, and stone will just sink down into that over time. If you peel it off and get to your sand or your, your substrate underneath there, then sand isn't, there's no organic matter to break down and decompose. It's just a, a solid stationary material that's gonna filter water well and everything else. And that's what you wanna lay your stone on top of. Long story short, didn't want to peel all the topsoil off, so we're using road fabric here. We used it on a, a different drive project, and so far we've had part of it down for about a year. It has served the purpose of keeping weeds at bay very well and keeping stone from sinking down. There's been a few areas where we didn't have the fabric, and you can see where the weeds are popping up and the stone is actually sinking down. So I do think from that long-term aspect, road fabric is worth it. Where it's annoying is if is when you lay it down, if you don't take a ton of extra time, which I didn't take a ton of extra time, to pin it down then while this material is being dropped on it, it tends to want to pull as it's being driven over, as stone is being dumped on it, and not stay in the exact spot that it was in originally. It's kind of frustrating. So long story short, using the Kubota tractor with the bucket on there to just kind of take the big humps out and spread those out somewhat. Um, uh, one of the frustrating things though was the fact that <laughs> it's good and bad. A gear drive tractor, it just wants to go, go, go. It has a lot of torque in it. <clears throat> That's really good in a lot of scenarios. In this scenario with loose stone in there, when it encountered some resistance, 
and it didn't want to move forward and just sat there and tried to gain traction and dig in a hole, well, it wound up going right through all the crushed limestone right down into the road fabric and ripping that up and kind of pulling all the road fabric around it and making a big mess out of that. So that was, that was a headache in and of itself. And one of the downsides of using road fabric is if you didn't have it, you wouldn't have to deal with that. And in the grand scheme of things, I would have loved to use this Kubota for the entire project, but I did not have my bigger rake available to me at the time. And so what I did have is a 72 inch landscape rake that had gauge wheels on it. And we used that to kind of do a final grade on the dirt before the, the stone all came in. And that's what I was gonna be using again, was that 72 inch rake on my 1025R. And again, the downside with that is that rake is too big, realistically, for the 1025R. The three point on the 1025 doesn't have enough lift height, so you can't really get the rake above the ground enough. Now, if you had a hydraulic top link on there so that you could quickly shorten it and lengthen it like on the fly every time you're done with the pass, you could probably get by with it then at that point. But with a manual top link, even with the easy wheel, it would have just taken way too long to shorten and lengthen as much as it needed to and as often as I needed to. Now, in the grand scheme of things, this went pretty well. It, the rake pulled along just fine behind the 1025R. It was really any time that there was a hump that it wouldn't get over it. I had to be very careful with how I turned and with how I backed up and went forward with the 1025R because I could not go over piles of stone. I had to like maneuver the rake around them. The other downside was when I would go off of the stone to the regular ground and then come back on, I had to be very careful to not catch the landscape fabric. I mean, it was, it was very frustrating. And at the end of the day, and I've done this now since this video has been over, I actually had Tom come back and top dress the whole thing with another couple of inches of stone. It just was too marginally thin. And while this isn't gonna be driven on a lot, there's still gonna be times where you're turning tractor tires on it or where you're turning truck tires on there and you're gonna be kind of digging down and compressing all that stone and I just don't wanna run into that fabric, right? I just wanna avoid that at all costs. And so partway through though, I realized, let's see if we can adjust these gauge wheels a little bit more. I had started to snag the landscape fabric here and there and that was super frustrating. Every time you do it, it's just like, oh, I, 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 the annoyance level was high. And so I adjusted those gauge wheels so that they were allowing the rake to go down the minimal amount possible, which was still a decent amount. And again, part of this is because the rake is oversized. Boy, it's pretty satisfying to watch though on video, I'll tell you that. And I bounced back and forth between having the rake run perfectly straight and offsetting a little bit. You can see in some of these areas how close I am to that fabric and also how much of a struggle it is to, to deal with those piles of stone. Now the cool thing is you can run these rakes backwards, you run forwards, you can pivot them around. They're great for trail maintenance. They're great for projects like this. I think with gauge wheels, you could use it. You got the neighbors shooting guns. It's rifle season's coming up before too long. So they're, they're getting sighted in. I appreciate that. And that way they don't shoot me when it's rifle season, hit their target. I love living in the country though. You just shoot your guns whenever you want. Yeah, let's just watch this bad boy work. See what happens, see the struggles, see the limitations. At the end of the day though, little tractors can get bigger jobs done. This parking pad's 40 foot by 90 foot too, keep that in mind.
First, we are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. Oh man, yeah, this is, that's when I snagged the road fabric or the geotextile really bad. That was, whew, man, heart's racing now, just, that's annoying. But that's one of the reasons I wanted more material on there. Yeah, it's frustrating. But it's buried deep now, it's still gonna serve the purpose. And again, this is a one-time thing, right? You're doing an install, little hiccups are bound to happen. Just deal with them and roll with it and move on. I mean, this total project, Chris, what do you think that took to spread all that material? I think the whole thing was an hour. An hour. So using the Kubota and the 1020, yeah, an hour. To spread out, smooth out a 90 by 40 pad. Again, the, the real time savings is, is getting a guy who can tailgate. And this was, I'm not knocking Tom, it was a material. It was tough material to spread today or that day. 
but having a guy who can do it like Tom can, that saves a ton of work. If you can avoid having big piles of material dropped off, you are saving a boatload of time by having, uh, by begging your driver to tailgate it like that. It makes it, it's just a huge time savings. Now, one of the things I like to use for big projects is a skid steer. And man, my old 333G would have had this done in a heartbeat. But I like to show tractor attachments. Now, thing is, I don't have that 333G anymore, but I do have a JCB 3TS 8T teleskid. And that thing, sometimes it works. And now is not that time though. And in fact, while we're talking here, it's it's been, uh, that boom hasn't raised. It's got 31 hours on it, which I know is a, that's a high hour machine, right? But 31 hours and it's now, it hasn't been able to lift the boom for about three weeks. And I called JCB yesterday on that. I was like, hey, this, where you at on getting this fixed? And they hadn't, they hadn't looked at it yet. Understandably, all their techs were on vacation and, and uh, you know, doing other things. So good thing it's not like a contractor that needs this thing day in and day out. It'd be a tough, tough pill to swallow to tell your customers, yeah, this kid steers down for boom won't lift. It's, it's basically brand new. It's 10 month old. Tell us good. Good job, JCB. So finishing this thing off by going backwards. Again, I just think this shows the versatility of a landscape rake. So cool. Great control. Not too aggressive unless you want it to be, or if your three point doesn't raise high enough. Just get a buttery smooth finish on there. This will settle in. It's, it's rained a few times already. That helps kind of pack it down. It's been driven out a bit, but you could compact this. I haven't driven a compactor on any of my gravel. It's just all naturally hard. Woo! Sound like that one hit the target. It's just all naturally hardened up on its own. You just gotta give it time. This is just residential. I'm not building a public road. Boy, I don't know. At the end of the day, I think I did a pretty good job. Well, folks, that'll do it for us today. I actually enjoyed that. Looking at that project, getting it done. It was, it was still frustrating when uh, I snagged that fabric and some of the other stuff and I totally get it. But in, in the grand scheme of things, that's small potatoes. I, I, I am still glad I put that road fabric down. Where we're standing just about here is gonna be the last leg of this whole huge project. That's several thousand feet, I think overall, linear feet of road, uh, gravel. That we're putting in all over the place and uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's gonna be kind of sad to have it over with. And we've shown you a variety of tools doing stuff and I was actually gonna show you, we got a, a four in one bucket slash pulverizer from Ironcraft. I was planning to show you guys that, ripping this up to do one of the last legs on the turnaround. <clears throat> Again, I just need that JCB to actually work, which is, I don't know, I mean, for 105 grand, if, you, if it works some of the time, I guess that's pretty good. But we may have to use a different tool just to get it done before the winter comes. But if you're looking for something for your tractor or your skid steer, we sell tractor attachments, skid steer attachments for the front end loader, three point hitch on the tractors, blowers, snow pushers, tillers, grapples, pallet forks, power rakes. He's still shooting, right? He's gonna be accurate this hunting season. Well, you can get them all from goodworkstractors.com. We sell and ship all over the country, even tractors. Some of these tractors are for sale too. I just demo them and try them out and show you guys what they're about. But we can put together a package for you, goodworkstractors.com. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by, and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.